Alright guys, Puppy's World here once again. And I wanted to just quickly talk about the fact of adding an external amplifier to your surround sound system. It's nothing new, it's nothing unheard of, it's nothing very complicated, and quite honestly it's nothing very expensive. Now, there are several different types of external amplifiers, and if you're as interested as in audio and video devices as I am, you've probably already played around with this a few times. You might recall on the back of your AB receiver something that looks a little bit like this. A small little section labeled pre-out. Now, what that does is simply allow your AV processor or surround sound receiver or stereo, whatever have you, connected to multiple other amplifiers or, in this case, an additional external amplifier. Now what I have done is actually connect multiple amplifiers up to the same system. And what I can do for you in a separate video is certainly turn this amplifier on right here which will give me an additional 7.2 technically, but the way I have it connected, seven channels of amplification or different speakers. Now I have my little bag of cables out here because I have some work to do, a lot of work technically with hiding some wires. And I've also got some placement issues. I've got um, definitely a lack of space here which is why truly I need to actually, um, and I can have the female film me and do this, but I need to do a proper surround sound setup in here. And um, the way I have it currently, I, I've taken down technically four of the height channels and just left the two little rear height channels in the back here. Um, I've had a voice of God temporarily installed, and I can tell you utilizing the Oro 3D and the different sound effects, specifically if I hit this button here, um, it'll turn off the heights and, um, you know, there are multiple different things I need to do here. And some of those are limited by space. Uh, to be quite honest with you, what really technically needs to have happen is I need to mount this TV up on the wall. I've never mounted, um, anything else on this property other than in the bedroom here. So I'm going to have to get another Santa's mount and mount him on up and then technically the center channel should be the one that's sitting at its highest or ear level you know listening level and i'd like to have my componentry technically kind of sitting on top you know an easy spot to have the fans uh, so we need to do a lot of moving around but um i've th you know this is probably my favorite configuration or favorite setup i have to be honest with you um a friend of mine that i haven't talked to in quite a while recently calls me up and he goes, come on, man, what's the deal? I've been trying to get a hold of you for months. I've been wanting you to come over here and, and build an Atmos or DTSX setup for me. And every time I call your company, I just get the runaround of, you know, he's not available. He's got appointments. He's booked. And uh, you're normally at your day job. So what the, you know, what the frick's going on? So, you know, I told him I'm glad you got in contact with me. I can come over this weekend and take a look at things and recommend some upgrades for you. And we can get to, you know, building a little theater system for you um, and bringing him in a DTS X and Dolby Atmos for the first time. Um, but there's, I, I'm glad I talked to him because there are some things that should be said or I should quickly explain here, briefly just go over. If you are running Dolby Atmos DTSX without a problem, you know, flawlessly, and you like your current configuration or setup, that's fine. That's great. Thumbs up for you because everything is working out. If you are utilizing Dolby Atmos DTSX and you're just not feeling things or you, you just don't notice too much of a difference over the last surround sound setup, over your 5.2 or your 7.2 or even your 9.2, um, there's some things that, um, you know, some, some tips and tricks that you can do. Um, 
Now, one of the things I have done, this probably worked out the best for me. This is my favorite configuration. I'll have to do a video on this, but my 18.2 surround sound system that I've utilized in um, another room, I haven't done it in here yet. However, I'm waiting to do a video on a at least a 16.2 system in here. But um, the 18.2 system that I've built is absolutely flawless. It's absolutely just over the top. Um, I want to show you one thing really quickly here. One of my favorite preamplifiers of all time will always be the Parasound. Parasound makes great products. I love them. I love being able to analogly, you know, analog control with knobs, my bass, roll off, my treble, more specifically the tight feel of this Parasound knob and being able to do this. However, I want to tell you and do a video at some point or show you how to use a preamplifier with your surround sound system. Because i got to be honest with you guys, the best thing, and uh, the female really didn't care much, you know, for it, but when I was able to turn this volume knob up specifically on my height channels, it was amazing. I was able to take four height channels preamplified through this preamplifier, and obviously, analog-wise, connect this preamplifier up to a stereo power amp. Um, and then specifically have my height channels in this guy and then be able to turn them up um, louder volume than the AV receiver allows. It was amazing. It was absolutely wonderful. You were able to hear every sound detail uh, flawlessly through those height channels. And the better speakers you have for height channels, the more you're going to be able to notice that. So that is one configuration I feel I should do a video on at some point. Someone was asking me about, you know, can I add a preamp specifically uh, for certain speakers and not other ones? And it's like, you know, absolutely, you sure can do that. And can I add a power amp for, for some? Do, or do I have to use it for just the front two channels? Or can I add a, um, you know, a stereo power amp for all channels, multiple ones, not the fronts? And let me quickly just run through that and show you what I have done. Now, in this situation here, I'm going to quickly pop on the lights because I want to show you the traditional configuration I've performed right now. And then I'll run into the subject matter I'm trying to get into quickly by talking about there's, there's totally different methods of doing this. All different ways to do it with different pieces of um, equipment, different units, different settings. Um, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. You can go into your surround sound receiver and you can change the channel levels, you can change the tone, but there is no setting in any receiver I've ever seen of, of taking separate your height channels or your surround speakers and not your fronts um, and changing the volume to those other than adding a preamplifier like we saw in the other room there. And that's probably my favorite setup would be to have... Um, a pre-pro or utilizing my SR7010 here and then have a separate amplifier connected to just height channels so that is why this guy is here he is here so that I can pop him on he's got no Odyssey or anything no height channel so he is connected specifically proprietarily to height channels that way I'm able to go like this and just turn up the volume on height channels what? While well, still using Dolby Atmos technically in those channels. Now, question. If you add a stereo power amplifier and it's connected via an analog connection, are you still getting the Dolby Atmos discrete audio amplification out of whatever speakers are connected to that? And the answer is definitely yes. You are certainly doing so because I'm going to bring your arm back here to my 7010 and I'm just going to show you that a lot of receiver backs, or you know, a lot of the backs of them look very similar to this. And I'm going to get to the section here where we saw in my last amp a pre-out, and that was a very, very, very limited section or setup because I'm going to show you right over here the pre-out section of this one. And yes, it can do a zone 2 and a zone 3, but it can also do your fronts, your centers, subwoofers, surrounds, surround backs, your front wides, your height 1s, and height twos. So as we know, this receiver will operate four different channels of heights, but we also have, if you notice here, an audio in, but a 7.1 channel in. Now, one of the things, or one of the, the benefits to having a 7.1 channel in configuration is we are able to hook up, as long as you've got those 
two pre-outs that are required, or if you've got a pre-out section like on this amplifier, where you're able to separate all the different discrete amplifi you know, amplified channels or surround sound channels, um, you're able to play around with a little bit. And I'm going to bring you back over here to show you that I've got things configured in a very traditional manner. I have my two front channels pre-out connected to my Emotiva amplifier here. And what I've done is, is, is quite normal. I have taken away or deleted, so to speak, my front two channels out of this amplifier. But one of the things I've also done is I've connected my, technically, my height speakers right now are being used by what? My front wide channels. And they're not normally placed here. I, I'm limited for space, so I've got to keep them here when I'm not watching a movie in surround sound. But when I am, I like to take these guys and put them eh, more or less right here to operate as wide channels and keep these in the, you know, in the place that they are for the front channels but power them with the Emotiva. Powering them with this Emotiva is one of the best things. Let me just show you this real quickly, guys. When I power this guy off and then power him back on, you're gonna see the actual woofers of these SVS speakers excurred quite a bit because that's how much power this power amplifier does add to this setup. So if you are running an Atmos or a DTSX setup and uh, you got height channels and stuff and they're it's just not doing it for you. Um, you need to do one thing and one thing only. You need to add a power amplifier. It doesn't matter which one you you know add. It doesn't have to be an Emotiva like with this oversized Tridal Transformer. And yes, 150 watts root mean squared each channel. So that's pumping 150 watts into here. But wait a minute. You disconnected the two front speakers out of this receiver. And I'm operating front still but with a setup similar to this. If I were to go front speakers B really quick and turn this guy up. A man reduced to a single instant. You're gonna hear audio at a certain volume here. If I now turn well, I this guy you on, this is one of the most I want you to pay attention to, to the front woofers here on these SVS format, speakers. So I'm gonna do a countdown really quick. I'm gonna turn the, the volume down. And I'm going to count down to three, and when I hit three, I'm going to hit this power button. One, two, three. Now just wait until that amplifier turns on. Did you see the woofers kind of slightly excurred? That's how powerful this Emotiva power amplifier is, and that's what it's doing for my surround setup. It is taking it to the next level. It is almost imperative if you are lacking or missing on dynamics, detail, clarity, depth of your audio, you have got to add one of these power amplifiers. Now, I will do a full review video on power amps and which ones to choose, what's the best price, around what to pay for them, specifications of them, and what you should be looking for. However, Adding one is absolutely crucial to a surround sound setup, specifically one that is utilizing 18.2 speakers for surround sound. It's absolutely imperative you choose the correct amplifier, and adding just any stereo um, receiver to the setup is not going to give you the best configuration. So guys, I'm going to run through that. I will do a total Dolby Atmos and a DTSX separate videos. I'll run through those, but I'll actually show you how I've installed things and what's the best way to go about adding um, certain height channels. I've, I've got a lot of cable management to do here. I've got some things to review. I've got some other you know um, devices yet to show you. Um, and of course, I've got the theater build I'm working on. But... It's really crucial or imperative that if you feel things are lacking in any way, shape, or form, to add a power amp. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll be back with a lot more. I've got a lot of things to do, and please subscribe.